I was working at a small local business. I was in my teens and it was my first job, so I was still getting the hang of it, but I was doing really good. The store decided to leave me up at the register alone. It was around closing time, and it was daylight savings, so it was getting dark really early. We were about to close until two deranged looking guys came in. Mind you, I'm still alone in the store, and these men come in and smile at me when they suddenly start putting random things on the desk that they wanted to buy. One of the guys kept going into the baby section, got a tiny diamond tiara, and then some other stuff like popcorn, candles, and things for babies. Not to be judgmental, but these guys didn't look like they were going to a baby shower or anything of the likes, so when they kept getting baby stuff and laughed, it rubbed me the wrong way. The guys came up and asked me for my name, stupidly. I answered them. The first guy smiled and reached out for my hand and said my name slowly with a pleasure to meet you beautiful and stared at me for like five seconds. I have some good intuition or gut feeling and I always decide to follow it. While the one guy was looking at me the other was just wandering around the store. I was here. Stuck all by myself. Thank God the cameras were on, and one of my co-workers came out from the back and stood up there with me and took over. She could sense something was wrong too. The men immediately backed up and paid for their items. As they were about to walk out, the men said, What do you want for Christmas? I didn't respond. So he winked at me and said he's planning on coming back for the parade. For your interest, my town has a Christmas parade every year. Me and my co-worker both got the chills. I'm forever thankful that my co-worker came up when she did. Who knows what would have happened if she didn't. We decided to look him up, get his name and save his face on the camera just in case he came back. I haven't seen him since, and I hope I never see them again. The story I'm about to tell isn't that scary, but for me at the time, it was. This story took place when I was 12 years old. Me and my family flew back to New Zealand, my home country, for Christmas holidays like we always do would drive to a different family member's house and stay here for a few days, then visit another family member and stay for a few days there. Sometimes we would end up driving to the north of New Zealand and stay at our family holiday house. Our family has this belief that when others have passed away, their spirits would travel on a pathway all the way up to the north and there to an edge to jump off a cliff beyond where humans can go. Our house is directly next to this pathway. I'm Polynesian, so I have a massive family, and we have a family house we share up the north side of New Zealand. It's very rural, so it's more like a farm, and the next town would be about five minutes away. One time, me, three of my cousins, and my nan went up to our family house to do some chores and pretty quickly it got dark. Our house has a sliding door as the front entrance, and as soon as you walk through that door, you could either go straight ahead or turn right into a hallway. Going straight would lead you to a little hallway and a couch area, then open up on your right to the lounge. Turning right would lead you to the kitchen, and then through the back, the lounge would be on the left. My cousins and I put a mattress on the floor of the lounge for me and two of my cousins to sleep on, while one of my cousins slept on the couch. My nan would sleep in her own room down another hall. While my cousins were sound asleep, I 
was struggling. I didn't know how quickly midnight came, but I still wasn't able to sleep. Then, I heard the sliding door open and close, like someone just entered the house. I could hear the footsteps coming around. They were going straight and then turned to the right, directly into the lounge. At this point, I closed my eyes because I got scared. The footsteps would eventually stop at the top of my head because I'm on the ground. I would eventually fall asleep because I was too scared to open my eyes. I would tell my cousins, but they thought I tried to scare them. I would tell my mom the story and she said that maybe a family member tried to visit me but fell asleep because I got scared. But my family always had a spirit that visits that house. My aunties and uncles all have experience of some other stuff too. This is a Scandinavian story and I think it's very spooky. So every year, me and the dad's side of my family go to plant trees in a huge field. And I was the plant carrier. So I ran with the plants to everyone. So it's a very tiring thing to do. After the first few days, I was kind of getting better at it. But I was still super tired after every day. So I mostly fell asleep at around 3 or 4 p.m. And I woke up at around 1 a.m. After the first days, I was kind of getting better at it, but I was still super tired after every day. So I fell asleep at around 3 or 4 p.m. and woke up at around 1 a.m. I'm sitting in my bed with no desire to sleep, so I go down to make me some hot cocoa, cause hot cocoa, and everyone was asleep. While I'm drinking this hot cocoa, I was scrolling on TikTok and saw something bash against the padlock on our shed. But I didn't make anything out of it. And I thought it was just my mind playing some tricks on me because I was super tired. After about 10 minutes, I heard an even louder bash. And I got scared shitless. So I turned off every electronic and grabbed my granddad's shotgun and walked outside. Now just a reminder. This is in Northern Europe, so we believe in elves and trolls. I walk out with the shotgun, and after creeping for around two minutes, I hear a humongous bash against the padlock. It scared the shit out of me. I peeked around the corner and see a huge man, at least three meters tall, with a huge sledgehammer bashing against the lock. At this point, I'm ready to shoot the fucker with the shotgun, but deep in my mind, I thought it would do nothing. So I went back inside to keep watching him from a safe distance. I look at him for about five minutes, and then suddenly he hits the lock and breaks it. He enters the shed, so me being me, I rush out and open the shed to see nothing. Absolutely nothing. Even though I just saw a huge man walk in there. The next day I told my grandma and she laughed at me. And told me that nobody believes in that stuff anymore. But I. I know what I saw. And I know. That wasn't human. When hearing this. I want you to keep in mind that this is 100% true. Everything I tell you really did happen, and I want the world to know. Something to keep in mind is that my family lives in a very wealthy neighborhood. We all live on a separate, privatized neighborhood water supply and electrical grid. We have our own garbage disposal, lawn care, maid service, and security team. All the residents in our neighborhood, including my family, are not from the United States. And all of us 
are either Jewish or Catholic. With that being said, I will begin my story. It was late one night, and my sister and I were sitting on our swing outside of our house by the woods. We were talking about a number of things, and eventually we got to our favorite topic of ours and the other few children in the neighborhood. The Mafia. It was rumored that the couple who lived across the street from my family were somehow connected to a strange group of people, often gathered at a large house nearby neighborhood, and acted as if they were the police, pulling over passing people and do God knows what to them. Keep in mind that my family's neighborhood is in the countryside, so there were many strange large homes. However, this house was like no other. It had bars on the windows and had blacked out shades pulled down so no one could ever see into the house. Us kids would spend afternoons gazing out the back gate of our neighborhood down the street, hoping to see the infamous black truck speeding down the road preparing for a hunt. In winter, we would pile up snow to get over the walls onto the backyard to try and walk to the house to catch a glimpse of the Mafia. But we never got that far. The Christmas and Midsummer Balls were filled with children's stories of the horrible people who lurked just outside our neighborhood walls. It was late fall, the night my sister and I really started to think about it. We were around 14 and 13 and had begged our parents to finally allow us to go to a public school near our house instead of belonging to a group of homeschooled kids in the neighborhood. Our parents finally allowed it, and with that, we had caught a glimpse of what life was like for others. It led us to wonder why our neighborhood was the secure place it was, and why we had everything in a private, separate grid. We began to think about each house's high-tech security systems and the license plates of the luxury cars. Suddenly we began to wonder about how our neighbors and parents were all friends with the local and state government, or how they were all foreign, and of the Jewish or Catholic faith. This was all very strange to us. However, the weirdest thing of all was our parents and their friends' fortunes. The people in our neighborhood owned many companies, however they never did any sort of work for them. The people in our neighborhood owned many companies, however they never did any sort of work for them. Our parents had several million dollars, however many of our companies were not profitable. We began to wonder if somehow the entire neighborhood was connected, and perhaps our neighbors across the street were not the only members of the Mafia. What if our parents, and the parents of our friends were all somehow involved? Suddenly the mood shifted. My sister looked at me, her face stricken with fear. And she said to me with a quivering voice that haunts my dreams to this day. Run as fast as you can. We flew across our yard. However, a 40 second sprint felt like an eternity. We dashed into our home. My sister with tears in her eyes said, Someone was in the woods. I could see their eyes staring at us. I could feel that they were dangerous. We stayed in our living room together for almost two hours until the feeling that we were being watched faded away. Finally, went to our rooms. Mine on the western wing, hers on the upper west was only an hour before once again I felt the tingle of being watched. I knew the spy was outside my window. I knew they were watching, waiting. I prayed for sleep to come, and finally it did. I still remember this night very well. 
It proves to me that somehow my family's in Wolfwith. Whoever those people are. Whoever my parents and neighbors are. They are far too powerful to challenge. Whoever was watching us was one of their spies. I feel it in my bones. Police can't do nothing because it's likely that my neighborhood has infiltrated both local and state governments. Something very strange is going on here. Money flows like an infinite river for the families in my neighborhood. Somehow we all come from the same few places and religions and speak the same free languages. I don't know who these people are or how many people are involved. Many people mysteriously appear in the area around my neighborhood, and I can't help but wonder if it's them. What are they doing? Who are they? And how powerful are they? In the years that followed the incidents, my sister and I have said nothing of the Mafia since, and often tell the other children to stop when they start talking about it, or play Mafia games in the yard. Whoever my parents and neighbors are, they are doing something very evil. That much, I am sure of. Hi, my name is Tran Lee, and if you like this horror narration, feel free to support me. You can support me by leaving a like, subscribing to this channel, uh, you can also send me um, some true horror stories and I'll read through them. Maybe they will appear on this channel. You can also recommend me some, some horror stories. My email is going to be down below and yeah, come, let's get scared together.